girls. <laughs> girls, if you would, please tell us about the most romantic moment of your life. Traveling. Far. Abroad. There. Was. A. Handsome. Man. Naked. Lying. Upon. Breasts. Of. Gold. <laughs> Egypt. Was. Distanced. By. Hurricanes. <laughs> of. Love. <laughs> All right, ladies, give it up for him, gentlemen, ladies, gentlemen. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's chase Phil and Kaylin out, make a little noise, get them out of here. Hey! All right, round two begins with a new question, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to find out who moves on to round three for the final question and no prize. Here. <laughs> Round two. First of all, Lance and Jim, guys, please describe your worst date. September 2nd was horrible. I was dating this broad. She was very boring to me. After the dinner, I decided to rape <laughs> okay, I think we can stop right there. <laughs> you know, I have to tell you, I've done over a thousand comedy shows and, and there's few things that aren't funny. But rape is one of them. Now, we'd still have to evaluate these men, regardless of however misogynistic they may be. So let's make a little noise if you care. All right. Seems to me that only the rapists were applauding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we go on to the worst date of the ladies. Ladies, go ahead, begin. Books become teachers when <laughs> students fail classes. My dad came over to Homestead School for outrageous dating studies. Upon arrival, Put his thing <laughs> chalky member down upon my thigh. <laughs> okay, that'll do her. <laughs> hey, there's only one thing that'll beat rape, and that's incest. <laughs> I just wish we had group three back out here. <laughs> Jeez, I, I don't know. I tell you what, let me have group three back out here. Y'all get the fuck off the stage. <laughs> yeah, who wants it, huh? <laughs> You start this I level. never thought round two could be so bad we'd go back to round one. <laughs> All right, well, here we have, ladies and gentlemen, the losers. Give them a little sugar. To answer our final question, <laughs> I don't know what went through the room a little while ago, man, but some folks are disturbing us in here. The third question is for the masters of love. The third question is, who is the sexiest famous person and why? Yes, a two-tiered final question. Who is the sexiest famous person and why? Only one person could match the sexiest person alive. <laughs> And that person is John Malkovich.
calling President Updown. This is Jennifer. How may I help you? Yes, Jennifer. Um, I'm Christopher Walken's personal assistant, and he's in town for a film that's shooting right now. Do you know who Christopher Walken is? Yes. Okay. Um, he would uh, like very much to come to your restaurant today. Oh, excellent. And uh, is, are you a manager? or yes, I am. You are? Yes. Okay. Um, but he he has some uh, requests um, of the restaurants that he's going to. Actually, I don't even know what he's going to order today. Sometimes he doesn't even order. He Sometimes he just sits there. I'm not sure. Okay. But I'm going to transfer you over to him in a little bit. Do you mind talking with him? Not at all. Okay. If you can just try to be as... as um, I guess accommodating as possible. That'd be great. All right. Thank. You. What's your name again? My name is Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm Terry. Nice to talk to you, Terry. Okay, hold on. Hello. Hello, Christopher. This is Jennifer. It's Mr. Walken. Oh, Mr. Walken. I apologize. Anyways, I'd like to come to your restaurant today, if you don't mind. Oh, that'd be a pleasure. Now. What sort of food do you have? Because a friend of mine told me it was good, but I don't know. Who knows about these restaurants and people's tastes and food? Sure. Sometimes an opinion is like an ass. Okay. Everyone's got one. Yeah. Who wants to hear from it? <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? Sure, sure. So you tell me, Mrs. Manager, what kind of food do you have there? And is it going to satisfy my palate? Um, in my opinion, yes, definitely. Of course, I'm just another opinion. Um, what we do serve is uh, south uh, Southwest Southern com Cuisine. Why don't you learn how to speak? Because I didn't understand what the hell you just said. I'm sorry. Um, Why don't you repeat that slowly? Take a breath. Okay, can I put you on hold for one second, please? Oh, so are you serious? You're yeah. going to put me on hold? For how long? Just two seconds. I gotta I'm going to count starting now. Okay, thanks. 1,001. 1,005. 1006, 1007. Thank you for holding, sir. That was seven seconds. I'm, I apologize. I'm brand new here, and I don't know the menu yet. All right, so here we go. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm going to come in there. I'm going to bring in some McDonald's. You're going to bring in some McDonald's? And I'm going to eat the McDonald's if I don't like my food. Okay. So I'm going to order something, and if I don't like it, in front of your waiters and your customers, I'm going to have a Whopper <laughs> and a Big Mac. And then I'm going to have some fries and I'm going to chase it with a vanilla shake. And then I'm going to throw the food down on the ground and say, this place tastes like my ass. Sir, would you like me to give you an idea of what kind of entrees we have? Sure, why not? Okay. That'd be nice. Sure, we have duck leg confit. Duck leg? Yes. No, thanks, already. Okay, we have filet of beef. Filet of beef, you can put that filet in my ass. Uh, rock shrimp and crab cake? Rock shrimp. Keep that one on the back burner. I might come back for that one. Okay. Seared salmon filet? Nope. And farm-raised bison? Oh, hell no. Okay. Those are our entrees. Well, so far, one of them has made me not throw up. Um, okay. How about a salad? Do you enjoy salad? Do I look like a cow? No, I don't enjoy salad. We have some sandwiches. Sandwiches? Wow. Almost like McDonald's. We also we have the pork por porterhouse. Pork porterhouse? Yes. Pork porterhouse? Yes. Do I look like a pork porterhouse sort of guy? Okay. Uh, let me see. I told you about the salmon. I, I, like I said, I'm going to bring a rock shrimp and a whopper. All right? And uh, we'll see what happens. Thank you very much. Thank you for calling, sir. Bye. Little sugar for Lance, if you would. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> you never know what's coming out there, folks. You never know what's happening. Now, I want to invite you all to a cast party that we're having tonight. Right after the show, we're going to have a big party right here. And the reason is, at midnight, at midnight sharp, our television show is going to be on television. It's a little redundant, but our show is going to be on television. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
First of all, first of all, you're welcome to stick around. The actor's going to be over here right after the show having a drink. And if you'd like to come back or, or stick around and uh, see the show on the television next time, at midnight, you're welcome to come back and see the show as it rolls. Every Saturday, we're going to put this on because our show is on television. We've had uh, over 1,000 sold-out shows here, thanks to your good word of mouth. About 1,070, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And... Uh, and because of that, a beautiful, fantastic new network called Turner South has decided to give us a television series. And so you're going to see us every Thursday on Channel 45 Media One. And if you check out turnersouth.com, it'll tell you all the other times that we're on throughout the week, like Saturday night. Ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to come back, stick around, tune in. But I want you all to give yourselves a little sugar because you've been really great to us all night. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we good? Please welcome Sarah Baker and Phil Cater to the stage for your pleasure. All right. Phil, go ahead on back here. You've just now, ladies and gentlemen, you've just now seen Phil. Sarah hasn't seen him yet. He's been off at war. Remember the first scene? He's been off at war. Left her here alone in her own hillbilly part of the country. Phil is about to return home and Sarah is going to give him some very bad news. What bad news is that? She's pregnant. That could be bad news if he's been away for quite a while, yes. Okay, he's pregnant and uh, Phil's been away for more than nine months so it's obviously not his. Okay, she's pregnant. You ready? Okay. And uh, by the way, coming back from the war, which limb will Phil be missing? Testicle. Oh. Oh. I don't know if that's a limb, unless you got a real... Never mind. Uh, but that's all right. A testicle. He's missing a testicle. What other limb? Ear. An an ear, a leg, and... All right. A testicle, an ear, an arm, and a leg, Phil. A testicle, an ear, an arm, and a leg. All right? If you do them all down the right side, you're pretty much half a guy. <laughs> it's true. Think about it. All of them. Yeah. No, weird. Okay, so she's pregnant by another guy and Phil's half a man. The game is Oscar Musical. The game's two. The first one, Oscar. Anytime I say Oscar moment, any actor that's speaking must turn to you, our lovely audience, and deliver an Academy Award winning performance right then and there, no matter what they're talking about. Now, when I say musical on, again, they're going to sing. When I say musical off, hopefully they'll stop. For Kevin Little, the musical genius in the corner, for my actors, thank you all. A little encouragement, a little sweetener now. me, Sarah. You don't recognize me anymore? I've been off to Canada. What happened to you? You just gained some weight or... My God. My God. Bill? Oscar Sarah. I, I had no idea you were this hurt. I mean, they, they told me to expect something different, but I just didn't, I just didn't realize it. You'd be so half there. Oscar Phil. You don't even know the half of it. <laughs> Not only am I missing this arm and this leg that the Royal Goddamn Mounted Canadian Police took from me, but this ear isn't real. And this isn't real either. I only have one musical on jewel left. <laughs> Of course, that doesn't matter now. I'm half a man, and I could never be a full daddy to you. You screwed around on my Irish friend, Patty. Isn't that true? You always liked his red hair, his sparkling green eyes. And now I've come back from this war to find you pregnant, you lying bitch. I hate you so. Please go off. Phil, babe, 
baby, just... No, I'm going to get out of here. Phil, this is please. wrong. This is wrong. I can hold you there, so just stop trying. <laughs> Oscar Sarah. I mean, it's been hard, you know? Musical on. Go off, Oscar Phil. That makes a lot of freaking sense. You missed me so much that you find solace in the arms of the one guy who I thought would watch over you, who'd stand by you. And what was I doing? I was crapping my pants in a trench in freaking Canada. I was dodging hockey sticks left and right. Shania Twain herself came at me with a hockey puck, took my ear, took my testicle, took my leg, took my arm, and I come back. Payback in shit! Payback in shit! Oscar off! My guy, I think I'm gonna faint. I can do it myself, I still got one good okay, arm. Okay! Now, you listen here! It does make sense! I wanted to be close to you, so I went to your best friend, the closest thing to you that was here available to me. Musical both. <sighs> Did he marry you? Now I'm here, not a whole person. What could I provide for you, my love? What could I provide? You just said it, it's called love. No. All right, I'll stand by you. you. Just gotta promise when you look at me, don't cry. My remaining testicle, we're fine. Give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. tonight is going to be improvised, made up on the spot by our actors, based on your suggestion. How's our audience doing out there tonight? You 
Beautiful. Right on. I, we got a good looking audience out there tonight too. Look at all the beautiful people we got in the house there. Very nice. Ladies and gentlemen, not only will everything on the stage be improvised tonight, but throughout the night we're going to roll some renegade clips in. What we do is we take big cameras and little cameras and we hide them all over Atlanta. And then we go out and we mess with you Atlantans and we capture your unsuspected faces on camera in a candid sort of way. And we're going to be rolling those in for you throughout the night. If you would, for me, at this time, give a little sugar to the musical genius of Mr. Kevin Little. Here he is for your pleasure. How you doing? Doing great. Doing Feeling great. pretty good? It's a nice audience, don't you think? It's an awesome Real nice audience, very good. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, give a little sugar for JC, my stage manager. Right here on my left. Right hand, left hand man. You're digging his shirt? Yeah, that's a pretty festive shirt there, Kevin. Nothing, nothing special, you just felt like wearing it? Just felt like wearing it. All right, well, very good. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to begin with an improvisational game called Subconscious Thoughts. And for this, please welcome to the stage Mr. Phil Cater, Kaylin Conover, Jim Ice, and Michael Sweeney. Here they come. Hello, guys. How are you? Feeling all right there? Looking a little under the weather. Phil, cl climb on up here. Get into your places if you don't mind. Kaylin, wave to the audience so they know who you are. This is Kaylin, ladies and gentlemen. You a little cutie? Give him a little sugar, huh? Yeah. He's the youngest in our group, and we're happy to have him here, ladies and gentlemen. A 15-year-old boy, 15-year-old boy, the youngest in our troops so far. He's a runaway, though, to escape. He's escaped his parents' house, and to escape the cold and perchance to sleep, he's come upon an abandoned house in the woods, ladies and gentlemen. He ran away from home. Why? Why did he run away from home? To escape the what? Oh, the share, I believe, soundtrack at home. Okay. Excellent suggestion. I'm going to buy you a drink for that one. His mother plays a soundtrack, I believe, shares CD. And she played it once too many, ladies and gentlemen. And this boy decided he's got to take off. He can't take it anymore, ladies and gentlemen. So he is running away. Not only will you get to hear and see everything that they do and say, in this scene, you're also going to get to hear what they're thinking, thanks to our friends on the microphones. This game is called Subconscious Thoughts. Give them a little sugar. Thank you for being here. Here we go. your presence on the prime material plane, Buster. Um, <laughs> my name's, uh, Clifford. Clifford. Oh my god. Oh, what in the world is this? Who is this guy? What? Is he dead? Is this guy dead? Oh, oh somebody please help me! <laughs> Clifford, huh? Feels like he's pretty young. Time to show him a little something that might entertain him. Yeah. Hey, Clifford, you know what a bone dust looks like? <coughs> I like that. You like jokes, magic tricks like that, Buster? Are you a magician? No, I'm not a magician. For Christ's sake, I'm dead. Look, I was just trying to entertain you. You're a little boy. I thought you might like some magic, something like that. Oh, hell, forget about it. I'm just going to kill him. <laughs> There has to be an explanation for this. 
I'm not, I know I'm not talking to a dead man here. This is too weird. What's, what's he doing? Look, I'm gonna rip your throat out, okay? You don't enjoy the, the bone dust. You don't enjoy the decor. I'm just gonna eat your brain, all right? Is that okay? Just come over here, I'm gonna I'm eat your brain. Uh, did I, did I resort to killing myself? Am I dead right now? Is this what I'm feeling? Do you believe in life after death? No! <laughs> Do you believe no. in life after death? No. Do you believe in life after death? Very nice. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if Kane mentioned this or if you were able to hear him, but we're going to be asking you for suggestions all night long. Keep your thinking caps on. Anything interesting, we love to hear it, ladies and gentlemen. For this next game, please welcome to the stage Chip and Jim. For your pleasure, here they come. Give them a little sugar. Hey, you guys doing? All right. Very nice. Take your places right up here. These guys are on break. Ladies and gentlemen, they have to be back to work in about 17 minutes, believe it or not. They're at their noontime break here. These two men, they work with their hands, and they work outdoors, and they work in the city. What do they do? They run telephone lines. They run telephone lines. Very good. They run telephone lines, guys. And uh, while they were working, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, they found today, during their job, they found a little koala bear and it was hurt and cold, and they picked it up, and they have it with them, and they have to decide what to do with it, ladies and gentlemen. Where did they find this little cold, scared koala bear? On the subway. On the subway station, very good, on the subway station. The game is called Emotion Spot. How many of you were able to give suggestions to our helper before the show? <laughs> right on, beautiful. Well, thank you very much for those suggestions. Her name is NASCAR Jenny. She helps us out all the time. She's a fantastic, fantastic girl. We are now going to use your suggestions of emotions to change their feeling throughout this scene. We'll watch them accommodate. Give them a little sugar, and thank you very much. Here we go. Sorry. Oh. Looks like it. I think it's catching a cold. Yeah, man, it's got something coming out of it. Oh, man. <laughs> Wipe some of that off. Come on, little yeah, buddy. Okay. It's, it's, it's all right, little buddy. Atta boy. Atta boy. Come on. Oh, it's all man, right. Come on, we ain't got long. You got to eat. Here, give me that thing. All right, well, we'll be careful with it. Be careful I'm, with it. I'm careful with it, man. I mean, it's a koala bear. I know how to handle these things. All right, well. I just think we ought to, you know, we need to do something with it. We found it on the train, but I ain't, I ain't taking it back to the train. Oh, man, I don't know, man, but you know, man, we can't be taking it back up to work with this man. You know what happened last time we brought something in on Mr. Webster, man? He got all freaked out and shit. I would, too, you know, when we brought a big-ass snake last time. Now, this is just a friendly <laughs> koala bear. Uh, he might not mind. Uh, sorry, little buddy. <laughs> Man, dude, this thing is getting sicker and sicker by the minute, man. I'm yeah. All right, all right, come on, come on, come on, little buddy. All right, that's all right. We're going to make things good. What? So listen, the way I see it is you and I can go up there, and well, one of us is up on the telephone lines. The other one can be down in the truck, you know? Doubtful. Tending to the koala. What do you think? Oh, man, no, I don't know, man. You know, Mr. Webster comes around the back of those trucks every few seconds or something, man, and you know that if that thing is, is in there, he's going to... I can't lose my job right now, man. Well, well, you ain't going to lose your job. You just got to have faith, or... Nauseous. Nauseous. Oh, man. Oh, man. Come on. Come on. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right. All right. Your turn. No, man. I can't, man. That's all right. All right. That stuff smells real bad. You'd think it'd smell like eucalyptus or something. But, man, I don't. Sarcastic. Oh, man, eucalyptus, man. I know what eucalyptus smells like. It don't smell like smells like 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 koala carf carf. Oh, that's real smart. Sensitive. Hey, buddy. Come on, who's your little buddy? Huh? Who is? That's right. All right. That's right. Come on. Let me see your face. Let me see your face. Childish. <laughs> Hey, 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 it's my turn to hold it. Ignorant. Uh, huh? What? I see. <laughs> All right, well, hold it then. I'm holding it. I am it, too. I put it in my hand Bitchy. like that. Bitchy. Bitchy. Give me the koala. Ah! It's my koala. Don't talk to me like that, okay? 
Well, I don't appreciate you talking to me like that in the middle of this, this darn nice establishment. Well, I reckon you ought to keep your mouth quiet before I give you one beside the hand. Apologetic. Oh, man, look at us. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, you yeah. little thing here. I know. Just a few seconds, and we're already arguing with each other. All Son. right. Well, let's do this, right? Let's Lazy. Just, let's just let them leave here. We'll leave them some crumbs yeah. or something. Let things let them here. Fine. We'll just, no, we'll just set them on the table. Just cover them with a napkin. Them, you know, affectionate. Nice. Affectionate. You little guy. You know I can't leave you. So cute, man. Thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Violent. <laughs> hey, man, hey! Back up, back up, bro! Give it to him! I'll take this thing right now! I never thought that abuse would be a part of my relationship with Michael. They say that there's two sides to every story, that there's a victim and there's a perpetrator. And I say, you know, the victim is just as much at fault as the perpetrator. I'm so ashamed of myself, of what I've become, and I love Sarah. Sarah, not now. Come on. You just said no. Don't, don't, don't start. Don't start. Let's just. I'm not starting. You. Why? Why are you starting? So this is supposed to be our Sunday morning together. I know. That's what we're doing. We're spending. We're gonna go get something to eat. Well, then what was that? What was what? You just went ooh when you saw that girl with the red shirt. And I the went tight ooh sheets. because you touched a little small on my back with your hand and it like sent a little. And it, it all begins. The most petty arguments. <laughs> Looking at some girl's ass while you're standing here talking to me? Could do that. There's lots of ladies here you could have brunch with, I'm sure, well, if you want to have it with me. Come on. F it. You mean f it? Ow! Oh. 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 All right, all right, all right, it's cool. I'm so pissed it's right now. All right, I know. Just take it easy. I, I don't know how it started. I don't know what makes a person what they are, what makes them become something. It's just like we woke up one day and we found ourselves in the middle of a nightmare. You just slapped me in the face in public. And was... Do it again. I'll do it eight times if Sarah. I have to. You know, you, you dream of your wedding day for a long time. How perfect it'll be, how happy you'll be. And we were, we were so happy then. I didn't mean. Alright, 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 alright. Alright, oh, this happens all the time. Sarah, come. Sarah! I just get so mad sometimes. <laughs> Holy shit. Come on, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. Sarah, Sarah, come on. Hey. Sarah. Hey. Back off. You need to go inside, in there. Get the manager out of here. I recommend very highly that if you have this kind of problem, you call 1-800-STOPITT. The counselors there taught me how to control my anger. They, they showed me how I could harness that energy and use it towards something more positive. Like pottery, gardening, macrame, cleaning, you know, anything. Anything other than hurting Michael. We're learning to live with each other peacefully. The folks at Stop It uh, taught us how to um, stop lying to ourselves, stop lying to each other. They pinned the situation as soon as we walked in the door, you know, no matter what we said, no matter how many excuses I made up. Um, <laughs> and now I think that we finally reached that point where we can actually catch our behavior before it actually happens. Um, we, we've got some Nerf foam bats. <laughs> Michael, 
We're working on this. We are. If you don't get help at Stop It, at least get help at Quit It, Cut It Out, Knock It Off, or Time Out. Sometimes saying you're sorry just isn't good enough. Come on, see. Let's go home. Ah, oh, there we go. Doing great, sweetie. Just great. Father and son, ladies and gentlemen, take your places over here, take your places. Father and son, we're looking for a suggestion, not a joke, not a silly suggestion, but a sad moment for a father and a son. What might that be? Struck out to end the Little League game. Ah, uh, very good. He struck out to end the Little League game and become a failure for all of his peers as well as his father's and his father's peers. Ladies and gentlemen, what makes this so very, very emotional for these two? Why is striking out such an emotional thing? He thinks he's also he's invisible. Dead. He, he, okay. Because he thinks he's invisible. Would that be the father or the son? The son. Okay. The son struck out, and it's very emotional for him because he thought he was invisible, and he thought everything would just slide through the strike zone, maybe. A floating bat or something. I don't know. But he thought he was invisible. He did have that disillusion. Ladies and gentlemen, there is one game here. This is called the buzzer game. Whenever I make a buzzer sound, any actor that's speaking must change the last thing that they said right away. This changes the scene, but they gotta keep on playing it. Give them a little sugar. Let's see how they do with the buzzer. Here we go. I see you. I see you, you're sitting there. You've got on a cap, a shirt, and shorts. You've been wearing it all day. Everybody saw you. Everybody saw it. Everyone saw what happened. Everyone saw that you swung and missed. Everybody knows that you're the little sissy boy in the neighborhood and you're quite embarrassing these days. Michael, I see that! You're not proving anything with that. You are gonna break the plate. Eh. You're a destructive little child with behavior problems, and if I have to send you to a special school, I will. <laughs> when you say everybody saw me, you mean your friends saw me. It's all you cared about. You didn't care that afterwards they drug me into the bullpen and kicked the crap out of me. Eh. <laughs> afterwards they gave me a wedgie with some other guy's jock strap. Eh. <laughs> Care that like they spit on me and held my hands below their knees and they would like spit and like let it drip down and then they'd suck it back up and then let it drip down and suck it back no, up. No, I, I and did that went care. on for an hour, Dad. I did care about that because I would have spit all the way, Michael. I would have spit all the way. I wouldn't have sucked it back up because it would have taught you a lesson. This only kind of taught you a lesson. Have I not been a good father? Eh. Have I not been there for you all this time? Eh. Did I did I not take you for a ride in the Camaro last week? <laughs> I was in the back seat. You didn't even know I was there until I said, hey, Dad, where are we going? Exactly. And so I took you around the cul-de-sac and brought you home. You know why? Because you don't care. You don't care. You don't see me. You don't see, you never see me. I can sit in a room with you for an hour and you won't say one word to me. What am I supposed to say? Good swing? Eh. Nice pitch? Eh. Good forearms? You want me to compliment your forearms? Is that what you, I know you got Steve Garvey pictures you, all over your walls. Is that, is that it? Yeah, it is it. Okay. Michael, you've got nice forearms. You don't. You don't mean that. You don't mean that, and you never mean anything that you say. You're a faker. Eh. You're a f freak. Eh. You're a something I can't say in front of you because you'll be eh. crazy. I hate you, Dad. I hate you. <laughs> I'm Phil Cater with Whole World, and we're about to find out the power of a dollar. Uh, I'm going to give you a dollar if you can do some funny noises, okay? It's a pretty funny noise. What do you call that? Well, it's sort of like, I don't really know what kind of noise it is, but that's what I do. Oh, cool. Can you make a really disgusting noise for me? 
worth a dollar to me. Here you go, Michael. What can you do for a dollar? Cartwheel. A cartwheel. All right, let me see a cartwheel for a dollar. Very nice round off. I definitely give you some points on. Oh, oh, not quite as good. What can you do for a dollar? Yeah, I can spit really long. You can what? Spit really long. Oh, I gotta see this. Even you can hit the Volkswagen with your spit. Go. <laughs> really? Okay. Sing as you are for us then, for a dollar. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. I think I heard dogs howling. A hockey song. All right, here's the hockey song by Austin. Should I sing it? Oh, yes, yeah, sing it. Get mud on your face, big test grace, wiping the platter all over. And then we will, we will rock you. <laughs> <laughs> Adam is now going to approach the swing and attempt to do a full somersault off the swing, no hands, in midair. After a three year career at jumping off swings, this is his peak. He's in top form. At 11 years old, it doesn't get any better than this. When he reaches 12, he probably won't be able to do it anymore. You can count, cut the tissue with a knife here. Unbelievable. Adam, you are a true athlete. Thank you. Get this kid a dollar. He definitely deserves a dollar. Sarah Baker and Michael Sweeney. Here they come. How you guys doing? Take a good look at them. My, Michael and Sarah here, ladies and gentlemen. They're about to play a game that's never been played before in rehearsal or in a show. I invented it today. This game is called Confessions 1 through 10. And what that means is that they have to make confessions to each other. If I say one, it's going to be a mild confession. If I say 10, it's going to be something that's really hard to confess. Now this couple has been in love, they've been loving each other for many, many years, for a long, long time. They both dreamed of having a family together, but they've recently decided to break up. They're breaking up. Why? He failed to get Ricky Martin tickets. He could not... <laughs> no Ricky Martin tickets, and that was enough, ladies and gentlemen. No Vida Loca for them. Remember... Confessions, one through ten, it tells you the severity of the confession and they must improvise with that, they must make it up. Give them a little sugar, let's see how they do with this brand new game. I, I, I don't know what to say, I'm, I'm stunned. Uh. <laughs> It's just, it's just a concert. It's just a concert, and I wish you would quit harping Wait. on it. Did you say just a concert? Oh. <laughs> it's not just a car. I can't even speak. Look, it's, just, I it's Ricky Martin. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Is it just doesn't do anything for me. I was only going for you. I can understand if it was like you know Rush or Sticks. <laughs> Ricky, you know, I mean, it just doesn't do it for me. Well, I'm sorry. I, no. I, I tried to go because you like it, so I was gonna. No. Okay, let's just face facts. You're threatened by my love for Ricky. <laughs> he looks better with his shirt off than you do. One, Michael. I am threatened by your love for Ricky. <laughs> I am. Honestly. One, Sarah. Well, I, I have to say that you look better with your pants off, I, I would guess. That's just damn hurtful. Five, Sarah. Listen, enough of this concert stuff, okay? It's not just about the concert. It's about what we've had, what Here we've comes. been, okay? Here comes. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. I love a lot of rock stars. <laughs> and, and I don't 
just mean I, I who? see their their, who else? their pictures in magazines who else? and I love them. I mean, I, I go backstage and I love them. Ten, <laughs> Sarah. Ten. I have sex with them. <laughs> like a lot of them. Michael, two, two, and six. That's all right, because one time I came on to your friend Betsy, and another time I came on to your friend Sally. What? But your friend Debbie, I screwed her ten ways to Sunday. <laughs> right under your nose. You were in the other room. What? That's disgusting. Mm -hmm. Sarah, ten, ten, and ten. Okay. That's disgusting. You want to hear something really disgusting? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Spit it out. Remember how I always talk about how nice your dad is? Oh. I oh think God. he's really, really nice. Oh my, oh my God. Oh my God. Number two. Remember when the dog ran away? <laughs> I made the dog run away under the wheels of my car. You killed Heidi? Yeah, I hated Heidi. Number three. You know how every morning the sun rises and, and I kiss you on the cheek? Yeah. Well, right before that, I, I, I kiss the mailman, but not on the cheek. <laughs> the mailman doesn't come till noon. He stays all night. Oh, my God. <laughs> Take your places if you don't mind. I need a volunteer. Can I have one volunteer? Anybody at all? Right there. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. We're very excited about him. But I want to go with the first hand that I saw all the way in the back row. I'll go to you next. But it was the first hand that I saw all the way in the back row. Can we see her? You have to come out from behind the exit sign there. There you go. There you go. And what's your name, darling? Carol. 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 Okay, right, right from there, right from there. I'm just going to ask you a question. I'm just going to ask you a question. The question is, shh, shh, shh. if you walked into an old house and you looked up and you saw something that literally freaked your mind out, what would it be that you saw that would, what would it be that would make your mind freak out? Rat. Darling Carol that's standing in the center. Rat. A stranger with a gun coming at me. A stranger with a gun coming at you. Excellent. I'm going to buy you a drink, Carol. Give it up for Carol, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Okay. Jim and his younger brother, Phil, Jim and his younger brother, Phil, just threw, <laughs> threw their ball into an old house, ladies and gentlemen. They threw their ball into the old house, and Jim, being the big brother that he is, sent his little brother in to get it sent his little brother into this creepy house to get it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna play a game called dialects. And based on your suggestion of different ways of speaking in this country or other countries, we will actually change the way that they speak. Keep your hats on. This is very challenging, so give them a little courage, a little encouragement, a little sugar. Here we go. There, man, look, he's got a gun. Do not see anybody, come on. He's got a gun, Jimmy! He's walking right towards me! I've right, never right, seen him, he's a stranger! Calm down, calm down. All right, let's go. I'm just gonna walk out of here and just sneak out real quick, all right? German. Nobody is looking, so we must exit stage left. You know what I'm saying? Jimmy is coming at me with a very large gun. I'm afraid he might perforate me with bullets. Okay, listen. If anybody is carrying a luga, then we must get out of here. Yeah, Indian, yeah. Indian. I'm right behind you, my brother. I'm okay. right behind you. Okay, come on, let's go. Jimmy, what is wrong? You are not moving very fastly. Jimmy, I'm shocked. My feet are stuck in the ground with terror. Okay, okay, listen, just be very quiet. Just Russian. Come. Listen, very quiet. Sit for just one second, okay? Just, you have to just calm yourself. What, what do you mean you want me to sit here while no. you shoot me with gun? No, no. 
You're, uh, what do we like to say, in state of shock. So Scottish. Must, so you got to control your. Bloody shock. right, I'm in a state of shock. All right. All right. So just listen here. All right, you bastard. Hey, you bastard. If you're not out with a gun, you need to get out of here. Don't worry, I'll clock you with this air tennis ball. <laughs> All right. Jamaican! Ah, oh, man, that tennis ball ain't gonna do nothing against the gun. You're right, man. Well, I wouldn't give for a great big spleef right now, nah, man. I know what you're saying. <laughs> Brother, I'm so terrified right down to my wee little soul, man. Okay, let's get your soul out the back door, what you oh, said. Oh, I reach. Oh, help me. Okay. Fargo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, there you yeah, go. Yeah, you're yeah. gonna have to drag me there, one Jimmy. One foot, one foot oh, yeah. next, yeah. Okay, yeah, you got okay, me there. Okay, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he's still walking toward us there, Jim. Right, he's still well, got know, that gun there. We need to go a little faster, all right? Oh, okay, Mexican. Well, man, He's coming right at us, okay, man. Okay, man, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here.